All right, there was, um, you know, this technology, 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 technology. So as we were, this is the warning right here where Yahweh says that in, in Isaiah chapter 24, verse 17, that fear, the pit, and the sneer are upon the old inhabitants of the earth. Remember in um, Revelation where it says that, um, that, that Satan and, and his angels were cast down, and it said that there was joy in the Samayat, in the Shemaim, in the heavens, but that it was woe to those on the earth. Well, here in Isaiah chapter 24 and 17, which dovetails with this present time and the the Elenin, the Elenin um, comet or planet, it might be Nibiru, it may be a star, they call it Tai Chi or, or TK, so forth and so on. TK, sound like TKO. You understand a technical knockout or a knockout of the technology. Is TK actually a knockout of the technology? Could it pose that particular um, possibility? It's possible. But Isaiah says something right here, that fear and the pit and the sneer, these three, fear, the pit, and the sneer are upon thee, O inhabitants of the earth. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day, in that time, this is what it will be, that he who flieth, or excuse me, fleeth, he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall, it says, shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the sneer, in the trap, for the windows from on high are open. That's what we were last touching on, the windows, and we're linking the magnetic, the magnetic um, field of the earth to be like a kind of a window. When the windows are closed, that means earth is well insulated and, and, and protected from certain cosmic radiation and dust and, and maybe occasional small level type of asteroid or, or other kind of flying um, debris, um, cosmic debris. But in verse 19 or verse 18, the end of verse 18 says, the windows from on high are open. The windows from on high are open. I think, this is my footnote here, that this, the windows on high and the magnetics of the earth have a relationship right there. It says the foundations of the earth do shake. It's kind of obvious for all of us, even those those of us in the so-called northeast then portion of America with that um, earthquake that, that hit and was even felt up here as far as broke kings up here in Brooklyn and in New York. It was felt, you know, a lot of people felt something for the first time they never thought they would even feel. And it might not be as bad as California, but like folks would say, it's not supposed to happen over here. You know what I mean? And it's happened. And it's not only earthquake. Not just us in here in America being affected by an earthquake, but earthquakes have been happening all over the world, volcanoes, all of these signs. So this is what shows us that the foundations of the earth do shake, the pillars of the earth do shake. It says the earth, verse 19, is utterly broken, broken down. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. Is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. That means that whatever Yahweh Eloheinu decides to do, whether this is it or whether it will be after this sometime, you understand, it will shake everything to such a level that no one will be able to look at this verse or hear this verse spoken and deny, you understand, that that is exactly what they have experienced. It's easy for us to be in a delusional, technologically um, drugged, technologically induced um, illusion or delusion state and to think, no, nah, ain't going to happen. That's like a movie, you understand, until it really happens. So the warning is for those who can receive it, but even those who don't want to receive it, good, they are warned. Verse 20 says that the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. You ever seen a drunkard reeling to and fro? I mean, for the earth to reel to and fro is either the whole globe is shaking, going through a, a wobble, a, a, a wobble where people will feel it wobble. 
that means all sort of things will come down. And not what I want, but as as a watchman, it's what I have to say. It's what I have to prepare myself and my house and my brothers and sisters, you understand, for if that should be the case. You know what I'm saying? If that should be the case. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage, like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. And it shall fall. It shall fall. Isn't that something? And not rise again. In other words, the transgression that we're witnessing in this present time. I mean, let's look at the murders. Remember uh, 9, 11 plus 10? the 21st verse, and they repented not of their murders. That's the same verse that's told about Wormwood. That's the same verse. This is all connected. We're still in that season, that time. This is just, what, 11 days later. You understand? This is the 22nd. So we're still in that prophetic season. You understand? What is the reason for the season? It may just be this. The transgression that thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. The reason for the earth being turned upside down and being moved exceedingly, reeling to and fro like a drunkard is because, one, a star, this star, it will most likely have to be this type of effect on the earth. For the earth to, it's like when two celestial bodies come in sharp proximity to each other because of their magnetic, you know, their magnetic and other, other ways that even man doesn't understand as well as they should, it will shake. So when that moves by, depends on the speed or even at whatever speed, the earth is going to wobble and shake because of it. I mean, shake in such a way that it's going to be recognizable. It's not going to happen and we're not going to know nothing. But it'll be like, what? I feel a little dizzy. Well, where people may even complain about feeling dizzy, you know, as in the earthquake, our earthly. Um, um, she even complained about, she, she thought she was, you know, like some of the older folks may think like they're, they're about to pass. People who are sensitive to it will feel it. But this seems to be so dramatic that it's not going to be something that you can avoid. It also probably means things will be falling down. I mean, it's kind of very, very um, obvious. In fact, Japan just had a big uh, tidal wave or storm recently. It, isn't it getting crazy? But it's not the Almighty's fault. It's humanity's fault. Humanity doesn't want to doesn't want to um, disannul that covenant with death and with the demons and the devils and, and, and this false uh, seclurum, this false way of living, this unrighteous, unjust way of living. Therefore, the Almighty will have to bring on, you understand, the, the, the end, in that sense, of this seclurum in order to initiate the beginning of a true new world, and one in which there dwells righteousness. Now, it's highly likely this planet, star, Elenine, comet, it, it, it's highly likely to exert a major magnetic gravity or gravitational and uh, polaric or the, the polarity force upon the earth. In other words, to affect the magnetics, to affect gravity, gravitational. Because remember, gravity um, is one of the weakest. Gravity is one of the weakest of the known forces. They, they, you know, people think everything's about gravity, but it's actually the weakest. So there will be some effect, you understand, upon the earth, the magnetically gravitationally or polarically upon the earth. Now, though what we've been reading is from Isaiah, the earth namely reeling to and fro, and, and this may happen in the tribulation more. In other words, it may happen additionally even more than that. Near the end, near the end possibly, maybe, Manalbat Malat Bamarinya, 
from an asteroid or something hitting the Earth. This is another possibility that an asteroid or something could could as well hit the Earth. But, you know, we could be wrong in the sense there's a, this is just saying that this is what's going on out there. This is what Yahweh said from such a time. And this is where we're at right now. And if we put it all together, we should be awake and aware and we should, you know, we should be prepared. In other words, it's like, simplify my love, simplify. You know what I'm saying? Be, be always ready. You understand? Um, this maybe is happening right at the beginning. You understand? Know maybe this will give the people of the earth um, seven years of devastation practically, maybe it might have unseen effects. In other words, effects that are not so dramatic initially. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it will pass by, but that effect on the earth, on the rotation, will have an effect on things like weather and climate and so forth and so on. Basically what we're saying is that Nibiru, if that's what it is, you understand? And archaeology and history testifies to something that can be called Nibiru in the past. If it is real, and we have no reason to doubt that it's not real, it is no joke. Though people will take it, the mockers and the scoffers in the last days, though they see the house crumbling around them, they still are mocking and scoffing. Where is the day of the Lord? Where is it come? You believe my religion and stuff. Watch, these people who, who, who never call on God, when they see it come to pass, they'll be calling on some God. I don't know which God they're going to call on, but they'll be calling on some God to, to, to save to save their, their to, to, to save them if it's possible. Um, but this could bring asteroids or comet also this way because a planet of this size has a very strong pull and trajectory. You know what I'm saying? It has like a gravitational pull out there. That means there may be other things moving in other orbits that will actually be brought like asteroids into this orbit and may have a lower orbit, and that lower orbit might be just in line to hit the Earth at, at certain places, and we don't know where it would, would it hit. But there, there's a seven-year period of time that we're in. Nibiru is, is no joke. You understand? There are going to be, even in 2012, this is already known, and, and, and there's already testimonies of some of the initial signs, possibly aside from Nibiru. Did you know? And we want to do a whole video on it, probably we'll do we'll at another time, but we'll include this here, that in 2012, they are supposed to be, besides from Nibiru, besides the whole Nibiru and Planet X thing, three asteroids and four comets near the Earth also. I mean, go check it out. It's out there on the YouTubes. It's out there. You can check you know, the guys who, who be studying out of space all day and night, they could tell you they could tell you if a dog star moves. You understand out there. And from what they've been looking at, they've been seeing that besides this Nibiru, you understand this planet or the twelfth planet or planet X and the black planet, the fear of the black planet, the black planet. Besides that, there's three asteroids and four comets that will be traveling this way, that will be traveling near Earth as well. This is all in 2012. Now, what kind of year have we had all over the world? You know what I'm saying? Not, we're not just speaking for people here in America, please. <laughs> Woe is I and I if it was, like the rest of these selfish people. We're speaking to all those who can hear I and I voice and can understand it and can pass the truth on to others. How has 2011 been? Surprising, shocking. Yet the, the, the spell you know, of Babylon is still so thick because it's being, it's being um, made operational. It's being kept in place by the media. By the media. I mean, isn't it a shame that these things are going on and they don't even talk about it on the news? Why? because they don't want people to panic. But don't people have a right to know about these things? They're paid by all the false stars and celebrities that don't affect your rising or your setting down. You understand? Yet, coming up in 2012, we're going to have at least three asteroids coming this way, as well as four comets coming near Earth 
this way. Now, Elanin or Nibiru was near aligned or angled to the earth and the sun in the past when two, two, that's two, when two major things happened. Now, the near align, alignment um, um, was when the 8.8 .8 earthquake, I mean, the Chilean earthquake happened. That was 8.8. .8. 8, I think what we experienced here barely was a 6, they said, right? But that was an 8.8 .8 Chilean earthquake. And on March 11th, as we put this up here, March 11th, there was a near alignment when the Japan, the Nippon, Nippon 9.0 tsunami or earthquake happened. This was 9.9. .9. Over here in the eastern seaboard, way up here in New York, we felt a little ripple, a little shaking. And we were far off from the epicenter. Now look at what happened in Chile when there was a near alignment, when it was aligned, you understand, just re recently. These are two major incidences. Now, if we take this scientifically, and this thing is coming our way on the day of trumpets, I hope you hear the alarm. I hope you hear 10 days of awe. We may really be experiencing this year a real 10 days of awe where people who wasn't even Hebraic or Jewish, you understand, would be hoping for a day of atonement. You know what I mean? A day when they can atone for their sins. Then they'll begin to recognize, you understand, a little bit. It's a shame that things have to get that way, but it is not unexpected. It was not unexpected from the divine mind. It was not unexpected. So what do we have here? March 15th would would have been the the better alignment day. March 15th, some say, then then March 11. Some say that they, they only do the 11 thing because they like this 11 thing, you know, Masonic or whatever like that. Could be a possibility. Also on alignment or near alignment, um, there, was, there was the occurrence of the New Zealand earthquake was also a relative near alignment, or some say alignment. Most likely it was a near alignment. But if a near alignment can cause the 8.8, .8, the 9.0, um, um, the New Zealand earthquake, can you imagine? Think about it. Can you imagine um, what a full alignment would really cause? This is the major, major, this is the big bang. This is the big thing. If it is a planet, Nibiru, and not a comet, it could bring an extreme polar shift. An extreme polar shift. That means the North Pole becomes the South Pole and the South Pole becomes the North Pole. We could even see rivers changing direction. This could cause, whether in East Africa, whether the Mississippi, other major, the Yangtze River over there in China, in China, this could cause some major devastation. Now, if it does, from an earthly point of view, this will also increase wars and rumors of wars. I mean, just imagine if the Nile River goes the opposite way. Somehow the Nile River doesn't go down to, or doesn't come up from, from south, but actually reverses its course. Can you imagine? Can you imagine destabilization in the earth? So no one knows exactly if there's an extreme polar shift because the last time there was an extreme polar shift, guess what? The earth was empty. The earth was laid waste. Those who knew where the hiding places were hid, and some believe this is where Genesis picks up in the beginning, um, or roughly there about from Moses' testimony, from his being learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. You understand? So he looked in the Egyptian record and properly understanding this is what he encoded for us. But this extreme polar shift and possibly either September October, November, this is the key. This, this fall, this whole fall season might be the fall of a lot much more than the leaves from the trees in the fall season. It could achieve what they call ascendant. There's something known as the ascendant gravity. There's a, there's a polarity dominance. There's a scientific theory 
of ascendant gravity and polarity dominance over the earth from the sun. Now, with the earth bowing to Nibiru for maybe a month or two, where the earth may bow to Nibiru, and, and not bow because it's worshiping it in that sense, but the energy, the energy, the energy will cause the planet to tilt. You understand? Bow to the sun, you understand, causing that ascendant gravity, a change, a shift in gravity. That means a shift in electronics. Um, it might adversely affect air travel. It may cause certain earthquakes, of course, and certain um, other wars and rumors of wars. Because most folks are not even, all they're going to be looking at, if, unless they see some big sign in the heaven, all they're going to look at is, is they're going to look at their bread and butter. You understand if the river, if the river that was over here now jumps over there in the other guy's yard, they're gonna blame the other guy for it, and here's what's gonna cause wars and rumors of wars. But what is particularly interesting is that if this happens at this extreme level, with the Earth bowing to to Nibiru, you understand for maybe a month or two, then this might even lead to a five-month period. And remember what we touched on in um, Revelation chapter uh, chapter 9 and their parts and their about It spoke about five months, some, uh, like, like, like a five-month global, strange, catastrophic, unex unexpected, nobody ever experienced nothing like this. Even the prophet John seeing it, he could just say, this is going to be real bad. You understand? It'll be about five months' time, but this is real bad. Because if you try to explain the Biru and star and bowing and gravity and all this, you know what I'm saying? If, if, it, if, if the symbology has fallen on deaf ears, that would have definitely fallen on deaf ears because people have only come to this level of knowledge again very recently. And this is when these things are happening, when man cannot say that he does not know. He may not believe you understand, and this God, that God, so from so on, but he can know, you understand, and they said you judge a tree by the fruit thereof. What better way to judge an apple tree? Are you going to judge it by the bark of the tree? You're going to judge it by the fruit. That's, that's, that's quick, easy, straight to the point. So a polar shift and some of the aspects of Isaiah chapter 24 are almost the same thing. So when you study carefully what a polar shift is, according to the scientific explanation of a polar shift. And then if you study the aspects spoken of, of Isaiah 24, the interesting thing you'll find out is that they're one and the same thing. Basically, one thing Isaiah is describing a polar shift, and the polar shift basically describes what the prophet Yeshayahu, you understand, Yeshayahu, the salvation, and his name means the salvation, the Yeshua, the salvation of Yah, of Jah, if you please. So it's the same thing. A magnetic pole shift is the mantle of the earth, the mantle, like a kaaba or like a, like a cloak, should we say, of the earth turning around the core. That's what a magnetic pole shift is. Think about this for a moment. A magnetic pole shift is the mantle of the earth turning around the core. The core is made of iron ore. This is what makes it, quote, magnetic or what, what helps its, its basic property of magnetism. The whole surface of the earth could possibly distort. You understand? The whole surface of the earth could warp. You understand? Possibly majorly in a major way or just to a degree depends on the correspondence or the axis of, of, of impact where it is, it is, it is majorly felt. But it, there could be a, a, minor, a minor distortion. They say, oh, how strange is that? You know, they'll do one of those kind of things on news and never link it together. So you're going to have to at least know this and be able to go back and check it out. Now, this might bring on perhaps a major earthquake. You remember Revelation talked about there'll be a major earthquake? And what's interesting about Re Revelation is written in the chiasm. I don't have time. Sorry, brothers and sisters. Look up chiasm, 
concerning prophecy in the book of Revelation. Look up chiasm. C-H-I-A-S-M. Look up chiasm. I'll show some space up here to put it by chiasm. It's almost revelation is written in a sense almost like two two pyramids in a sense. That if you look at the the language of it, it almost like it's written like back front front to center, hitting center point, it's like it's going back it's going backward to the end. It's like a, a inverse, almost like in a very interesting pattern. I know there's a probably a better way. The, the Wikipedia probably explains it better. But why I'm mentioning this chiasm pattern right here is because when you look at when the great earthquake in Revelation chapter 9, and this is where the chiasm is most sharply felt. That's why when somebody reads Revelation from front to end, it seems like the book is repeating itself again. But what is happening, it has the earth view, or one could say the heaven view and the earth view. You understand? And they both kind of meet up somewhere in the center. So some things that people say is repeating itself, it's not as though it's happening again, but there is a kind of a, a mirror access of the book of Revelation. So Revelation is written in a, a, a chiasm sort of way. So that major earthquake that we see seems to happen in the initial part, before what ones could call 9-11, might actually be happening in a reversal part, even as a 10 years later earthquake that happened over here in the northern seaboard. That right there was a warning sign. You understand? That right there was a major, a major warning sign. So we have a couple of interesting things here. Perhaps a major earthquake, vol volcanoes, tsunamis, major even tidal waves, the whirlpools, there, there, there will be lake beds emptying, you understand? Yellowstone, a national park, super volcano may erupt too. They have a super volcano right there. Um, the New Madrid fault line or fault zone with 15 nuclear reactors. Did you get me? The New Madrid fault zone has 15, not, not even five. I mean, come on. I mean, how... How demonic, because you have to understand the fall beings want the deluded men and people under their authority and control, their sorcery, psychic authority. They want them to mess with nuclear energy, and they want them to mess it up. See, I don't even have time to explain it here, but there's radiation fields, and they use radiation fields and chips of bit planets and part planets as in the beginning to even form certain sacred sites in the world, most sacred sites they know are magnetic. Most holy places are magnetic. And, and the use, what is done in these sites or what can be done, once you get this energy, you can have time travel. You can bring other beings in from other dimensions. You know what I'm saying? If you have a magnetic zone. You know what I'm saying? So the demons want nuclear nuclear seepage into this earth. This is why these people who have all this knowledge and so forth and so on are still doing idiot and foolish things because most of them believe the demons that they worship. The gods of the nations are demons. So most of these Gentiles believe the demons that they are worshiping. But the demons that they're worshiping only wants them to ruin the earth and possibly receive the earth in receivership. I don't want to even go into that right there, but um, since since God is just, you have to remember what Satan did with Job. Satan made a legal argument, and the demons are making a legal argument against man. They're saying, look what man is doing. Look in America. These people have killed 50 million of their people. These people have legalized, you know, what was once abomination. They threw uh, Bibles and, and prayer out of the classroom. They're going about wars and rumors of wars. They're giving their soldiers psychotropic drugs and sorceries and, and all these things. So the devil is really making a good case against humanity, but there's the remnant, you see. And, and this is where the focal point of his attack has been. This is why when you look at even the Wikipedia, the, the, the Wikilinks people, all they want to do is just tell people what the truth is. But the truth is dangerous. He said, if you tell people the truth, that means that they've done evil. They've done wickedness. Therefore, there is a just God who rules the universe. 
not just this, this little blue planet here, but the whole universe. So there's a New Madrid fault line, fault zone, should we say. It has 15 nuclear reactors along the fault zone or, or, or fault line or whatever they want to call it. You know what I'm saying? This may give way. Can you imagine if these 15, if, if the fault zone gives away and these 15 reactors or a majority of them go down into this fault? See, and these are the people that you pay your taxes and you vote for, and these are the people who you say, that's my government, I'm American. The Almighty is not partial to any of that. The Almighty is firstly concerned with Israel, and we're speaking about the Beit Israel, the seed and the spiritual Israel. So that all that American nations and nationalities, there's only a few nationalities today on the face of the earth that the Almighty even has regard for. You understand? Um, and Ethiopia is also one of them. But this also means that to whom more is given, more is required. You understand? So this could give the meaning of to why in Isaiah chapter 24 it says, Fear and the sneer and the pit are upon thee, O inhabitants of the, of the earth, O inhabitants of the land, because this Elanin Nibiru is going to pass by the earth, they say, passes by in October, November. You understand? If it is Nibiru, it may latch on to our South Pole. That means that, can you, can you, you also, that it may latch into the zone, the magnetics of the South Pole, dragging it to the north dragging it to the north, so in this pass by, in this passing by, it will actually make a pull of the magnetics, and we don't know what kind of interruption of this man-made last day technology there will be, you understand, on its way past us. Now, a polar shift is major. You remember that the last time human beings have experienced a real polar shift, That's what wiped out your so-called dinosaurs. You understand? That's what wiped out your um, dinosaurs. We're not talking about the I love you, you love me guy. I'm talking about the real flesh and blood, you know, dinosaurs. That, that's what wiped out the first world. And there's a whole debate about who actually were those first world people. Some say that Satan actually had custodianship of the earth. And then when Adam, ha Adam was created, Satan didn't want to bow to ha Adam, you understand, and therefore rebelled. And part of this is because Satan, or more correctly, Satana, a female being, actually, but that's a, that's a whole different point right there. Usually when it manifests, manifests as a, as a male. You understand, we have to explain that, that kind of, um, the Bible actually talks about it, but in the translations, it takes out the gender aspect, so people can't really understand what it's really pointing to. This is the reason why in this last days we see this, this radical and, and degenerate sort of feminism. In fact, recently, they have this woman running around here in um, New York City um, on a train. She's slashing other women. And with the story just came on TV, like the news last night or something. What was interesting about that was while they were going around asking subway riders, what do you think about that? One woman had the audacity. <laughs> she had the audacity to actually state, oh, that's so sad. I wish it was a man. Oh, my God. You, 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 there's a woman slashing other women on the train. And some women actually say that they're so saddened by this. They wish that it was or would have preferred, but she said wished, actually. I caught that. She wished that it was a male. So there's a real gender confusion down here because there was a gender confusion up there, you understand, between Satan and Satana. Remember, Lucifer refers to the Venus. That, 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 that morning star, the star of the quarter, that quarter star. And Venus also refers to a goddess. You, you understand? To a goddess. Now, what is the link? They worship the queen of heaven, 
You understand? But the queen of heaven that they worship was the fallen angel and, 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 and demonic entity that humans call Satan and Lucifer. You understand? So what is the connection there? Okay, look it up. You'll find out. Um, if it is Nibiru, it may latch on. So can we touch on that right there? Now, there are two kinds of polar shifts. And we'll take this to this point right here because, like we said, we got much more to share with you. But on the polar shifts question right here. Now, there's what's known as a geological polar shift, and there's what's known as a magnetic polar shift. Now, a, a geographical, I say geological, geographical, I stand corrected, or I sit corrected. A geographical shift, well, let's explain. The day of the Lord arrives as a sneer to the whole world to everybody on the earth, not just the Americans, not just the people in the West, not just the Africans or people in the Middle East, but to everybody on the world. Now, aspects of Isaiah chapter 24 could be a prelude announcement. And if you ask me, and this is just based on the same data, that evidence that we're presenting to you all, I think that it might be a prelude announcement, but there will be some real effects so those of us who minister will be able to say, you see, you know what I mean? This is the first seal. Some people say this is a prelude announcement to the first seal being opened in the book of Revelation. You understand? Bringing in of an antichrist dispensation or a crystal takawami, but some say a physical persona, you understand, who confirms a peace deal a peace deal with Israel, the state of Israel, and others according to Daniel 9 and 27. This peace deal could happen, some say, this September. We're still in this month of September. Remember, it's the 22nd. So there's still much to happen in this very month of September, and they still are negotiating, arguing. Obama just kind of went there and said, you ain't going to get no state from it. That's not how it's done. It's done negotiations. In other words, the Palestinians will have to negotiate with Israel, with the United States as the, as the middleman, or to say the Obama would be that middleman between the two. And it seems, in spite of some of the more radicalized people on both sides, it seems as though both sides are willing to kind of, um, if Obama said this is the peace thing, I think he might be able to achieve that. After all, they gave him the Nobel Peace Prize before he did anything, so it will only be right that he at least now do something at this time. So look for this peace deal, you understand, this September, and look for what happens at the U.N. this, this same month we're in, you understand, with the Israelis and the Palestinians, because, again, remember, when they say peace and safety, can you imagine? We finally have a peace deal between everybody's shaking their flags and yay! I've been looking for this moment so long. You know, we're going to get that kind of spin. When they say peace and safety, you understand? First Thessalonians chapter 5 and 3, then sudden destruction and they shall not escape. The sudden destruction could be, some say, on September 26, 2011, when Nibiru or the Elanine, you understand, the earth and the sun are going to be aligned. So these three are going to be aligned September 26. This is about, what is it, um, about two days, two days or so away. And this right here is interesting because this will actually be on the Shabbat time, right, the Shabbat time. Um, the planet and the comet is going to be super near or really, really close and will be between the sun and the earth. Now, this alignment, if it is the long-expected and, and much talked about Nibiru, it will bring maybe three days of darkness. Should this happen, there's a possibility of some sort of eclipse. It might eclipse the sun or might be between the earth and the sun in such a way where it will bring certain visible darkness, whether over all the earth or portions of it, 
we have to just to wait and see. Now, look at this verse, when Amos 5 and 20, when you get a chance, look at Amos 5 and 20. It says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness? This is what we were touching, touching on a little bit earlier. And not light? Question. Even very dark and no brightness, no brightness in it. So this pole shift could happen on or close to this day instead of the October, November. You understand? So there, there's a lot of possibilities, you understand? But we're in a time where the likelihood is that we're going to see one or all of these. You understand? Know we're going to see we're going to see a lot of stuff going on. I mean, after all, who can doubt a uh, uh, east quake, a uh, east east quake, uh, east coast earthquake as happened recently? A lot of folks, like they said, they would never believe that it would have happened. Well, now they know that it can happen. You understand? Know what, what we're saying is that it will happen, and this might be a time of it happening if what we have been told concerning this Elanine is true. Now, this date almost, almost, almost coincides with the Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, September 28th to 29th. So, my brothers and sisters, while there's time, go look this up, check it out for yourself. But the main thing, Watch and pray. You understand? Watch and pray and have faith in the God and the Father of our Lord and Savior, our black Lord and Savior. Yes, it is true. Yeshua Ha Moshiach. And to our brothers and sisters in the faith, we say Shalom Rastafari.